Hey y'all, it's Taker's Keep, coming back at you with yet another anime figure haul. Today, we're going to be unboxing our July 2024 pre-orders, and we have a fantastic lineup. From Persona 5 to Street Fighter 6, we have a lot to get into. So without further ado, let's get right into the unboxing. Now, although I'm very happy with my anime figure haul, the lineup is spectacular. I still have some buyer's remorse. Earlier this year, there was a pre-order drop for Jury and Chun-Li's pop-up parades. Um, their SF6 designs. And as a Jury stan, I mean, you can even see from my channel, my channel's icon that we stan Jury. Jury is my main in Street Fighter VI and I stand by her every step of the way. I just was not thrilled at her prototype prototype sculpt when it came out. I thought her face looked really off and the painting just looked really cheap, at least for my standards. So I pre-ordered her off of principle. Even though I wasn't thrilled with her at all, <laughs> I still felt like Capcom had to hear us through our wallets, through our, through us buying it. We want more jury merchandise. I'm not going to be unboxing her because although she looks a lot better from her prototype, her her final product still looks really good. You can probably see it through her window of her box, but. I just feel like she won't be a great addition to my collection. I've already purged most of my pop-up parades from my collection, and I feel like the scale of them is very weird compared to my Chun-Li by Max Factory that I have now, and my Kami, my 1-6 scale Kami. I just can't see her fitting properly in my Street Fighter, my growing Street Fighter collection. So, I'm, I'm going to be parting ways from her. Although I don't plan to keep this jury pop-up parade, I did put a pre-order for the Bunny Girl version of jury by Freeing. Uh, yes, I am getting into one-fourth bunny figures. Uh, I told myself I'd never do it, but, you know, either you die the hero or live long enough to become a bunny girl collector. So I'll be, I'll be getting both Jury's bunny figure scale as well as Chun-Li's bunny figure scale. So that's sometime in spring of 2025. So we'll revisit this and we'll, we'll see if those particular figures make the cut in my Street Fighter collection. But again, I think she is one of the better pop-up parades. Um, probably one of the best Street Fighter 6 pop-up parades, not that there's many of them that exist right now, but if you do want a really good priced um, jury figure, I think Good Smile Company is still selling her at around $35. She is still a fantastic option. I just unfortunately won't be showcasing her in all of her glory today. And with that, let's move on to the next figure. Now this figure is a figure I've been very excited for, Tei Takemi from Persona 5. So she has always been one of my favorite confidants in Persona 5 and it's, it's honestly because she's goth. Um, Tei Takemi was my goth awakening. So you know, let me stop right there, let's get right into it. Very simple packaging. And so this pre-order period was a, this was a very long pre-order period. About, I think it was about two years. Cause I think she went up for pre-order on Ami Ami at the end of 2022. If I'm not wrong, I probably am wrong. I just felt like this one was in pre-order hell for a very long time. Even though it's already, it already has a previous release, I, I can only imagine what Amikuni was doing in that time span. But you know, as they say, 
good things come to those who wait. And I was pay gonna pay the aftermarket price for her. Not at all when I could get her for much cheaper by just waiting for her pre-order. Man, I will say her arms are really hard to take off. I'm having a lot of difficulty with these arms. All right, let me put her safely into the chair before I damage her. There we go. Now that I have Tay Takemi right here in front of me, thank God <laughs> Amakuni re-released her because this figure is straight up Grail level status. It is a, gray, a Grail figure if I've ever seen one. Like, she is just so faithfully sculpted from the games. Ami Kuni just meticulously sculpted her hair strands. They sculpted them in such a way where it even hides the seam lines in her hair. They, it just looks really natural, yet very faithful to her in-game portraits. Her face is... <laughs> It's just immaculate. They did a very good uh, job of her eye decals, as well as her mouth sculpt. What stands out to me the most is her lab coat. The amount of shading they went with, like, they made sure that this lab coat wasn't just a straight-up white coat. They really went in on the gray tones, the shadows, the shading, and also made sure that it drapes properly over her office chair. Her dress is just a simple matte black. However, it's a great contrast to the coat itself. Now, you can pose her without the coat. The coat is completely removable. You just have to take it off and put on her arms. But I just feel like taking her coat off kind of takes away from the amazing sculpting of the coat. Like, the coat completes the figure. Matte black for the dress, which makes it a little bit understated, brings out other features in this figure, like her lab coat, her red belt, her stilettos, her fucking heels. Her heels really just take center stage on this figure with the glossy black. My, the one thing that does scare me about this figure is paint transfer. I would say like if there's too much paint transfer from taking the lab coat off, it'd be less desirable to present her without the lab coat. Now, with Tei Takemi being out the way, we move on to our next Persona figure, and that is the Persona 3 Pro Tag Coon. Um, though I believe the fan base have come to a conclusion that his name is Yuki Makuto? Makuro? I don't remember pretty much. I know it's Yuki something. I will put his name, I'll put his name somewhere in the video, but for all intents and purposes, this is just the Persona, Persona 3 Pro tag. So let's get right into it. I'll be careful not to cut myself now. And so this is sculpted by Kotobukiya. And this is part of their art FX line. So usually these are about one eighth scale. I'm not sure how he stacks up to take to Kemi, but we will find out. All right, in true Kotobukiya fashion, he is generally in one piece. Not really much going on here. Yeah, there's very few pieces to put together here, um, which is good. Fewer pieces, the less likely I'll mess it up. We just kind of have these broken glass pieces to put on, and then we'll be done with the assembly. Um, I just gotta match them up correctly, like Legos not to force anything in too much. Now, first impressions is 
damn does he look small. I know he's a 1 8 scale, and that's usually where Kotobukiya skate, um, sculpts their figures at with um, male figures, but he just looks really tiny. Maybe it's because he is a skinny boy, but I even thought that Tei Takemi for a 1 7 looks small, but I just feel like he looks even smaller as a 1 8 scale. Uh, like my Toji Fujigoro is also a 1 8th, but he still looks pretty big. Or maybe he's on the bigger side of 1 8th. You know, I don't really know on, off of what basis these companies scale their figures by, but I would say that he is about, I believe he's 9 inches tall, so he's bigger than a standard pop up parade, but the features are just so fine and petite. Uh, but I'm no, I'm not really knocking him for being small. The best part of the fact that he has the small features is they really went in on his detail. I'm really in love with how they did his hair. Again, they really sent it with the strands that each individual strand is properly sculpted and it really hides the seam lines. So it looks really seamless. The action, the dynamism of his school uniform how it's flowing into the wind it just looks fantastic uh the shading is on point for a relatively budget scale figure by go to um this one retailing at around fourteen thousand yen or around a hundred dollars so you're getting a lot of value out of this figure the bullet hole in the middle kind of symbolizes the evoker that he's holding in his right hand how he has to shoot himself in the head to activate his persona and I'm saying all this as someone who has still not played Persona 3, by the way, uh, so no spoilers. Um, I, I bought it in anticipation for re Reloaded, um, but I never went through with buying it because I just had so many other um, video games I needed to play. I kind of even gave myself this rule that I need to play Persona 2, the, the Persona 2 dual, dual, duology first before I move on to the Persona 3 series. Technically, I don't need to do that because they're completely um, separate games um, within the same universe, but they go, they happen at, they happen independently from each other. But I would still like to do it for myself. Uh, but I just really loved the, the, pre the Persona 3 Protag's design, so I needed this figure. Uh, and I'm very happy to have this will be my second ever Persona figure, the first being Tate Akemi and the second being him. So it's great to finally have some Persona in this collection. Now without further ado, we have our final figure from this haul, and that is Miyamoto Musashi from Fate Samurai Remnant. Now, <sighs> this is a variation, or this is one of her Spirit Origins of Miyamoto Musashi. Fate lore is incredibly complicated to explain, but let's just say that this is an alternate timeline Musashi that is female. And her first appearance was in Fate Grand Order in the Shimosa arc. And she was a saber in that arc. However, it's kind of, well, Actually, she was not even a saber. Um, she was human. Com very com convoluted. I, I can't go into it because it would overshadow the figure unboxing. But let's just say it's female Mu Miyamoto Musashi, and she is a badass. Oh boy. That was actually very difficult to get her. That was actually very difficult to get her out of the box. A nice clear base, very standard, but you know, surprisingly we do not get enough clear bases. We, we really don't get enough of these. I just like how honest this is. Call me boring, but I feel like when they add color to the, 
I feel like when they add color to the base, it actually takes away from the figure itself sometimes. And it gets really annoying when, especially when they're black standard plastic bases, they just collect dust. Well, the dust shows way easier on them. Not that, th that dust can't show on clear bases, but I just feel like you can get away with a lot more of a clear base. So I'm not, I don't hate, I don't hate the fact that, um, that they use a clear base for this figure. And man, she has a lot of flowy bits. Alright. So I really do like that there looks like there's very little assembly required with this one. Huh, nice. Let me just go ahead and, oh, they use a double peg? Oh yeah, that's a, this is a double pegged, this is a double pegged figure. Yeah, they used a, they really trying to reinforce this figure. I mean, there is a lot of there is a lot of risk for, oh yeah, I'm gonna need a support pole for this one. Yeah, support pole is very mandatory. There's a lot of, she is very weighty from the front. I actually should have took the support pole out before placing her on the base because I don't want to snap the, her, uh, her leg in half. So we have to prop this up. So gently. Try not to scratch her leg. I think we got it on without without incident. All right. There we go. Now, I must say this figure is absolutely amazing. <laughs> like I'm gonna say it right here. I don't own other Miyamoto Musashi figures, but I think this one, this one right here, is the best one available. Hands down, the most intricate, just the most well-designed Miyamoto Musashi that there is. Koei Tecmo really went above and beyond with sculpting this figure. I mean, uh, it's, she just, she's just so crisp. That's how I would describe it. The, the coloring, the, the detail work, the, the painting on her sleeves, the painting on her obi, the, her, her robes, and just like the, the distressing at the ends, showing off her berserker side. It, it's just so well done. I, I honestly don't know where to even start with this figure. It's, it's kind of difficult because there's just so again there's just so much going on it's like she is wearing straight up tapestry as her clothing and it's just captured so faithfully there was a deluxe edition of this figure that was exclusive to buying the collector's edition of samurai of fate samurai remnant but I, it had these effect pieces, these purple flames on the base that I wasn't a big fan of. The amount of detail, the sheer amount of detail that's gone into this figure, I feel like it is a shame to distract from the sheer excellence of the figure. Go down and look at her sandals. The fact that they got the weave down, the woven sandals just look so crazy crisp, authentic looking texture. The hair just looks like there's not a seam in there. Um, it's just super well sculpted. It all looks like one piece. Um, it's got this really nice peach color. I feel like a lot of figures don't do her color, the color of her hair justice. I feel like either they go too on the white side or too on the pink side. I feel like they captured the midway really well on this figure. 
They have her captured in, I believe, in, Sam in Fate Samurai Remnant. They call this stance the water stance. She's really showcasing that Nitin Ryu style. Although it's not Chun-Li level of legs, Musashi does have some great musculature around her quads and her thighs, especially the quads. The, the leg that she's pushing off of on this base just has some really good muscle definition. So it's, it's nice to see that more figure manufacturers aren't shying away from girls having a bit of muscle. And even with that massive support bowl, I, I'd rather have it than not. I would hate to have a catastrophic accident where um, she starts leaning because I don't have the peg out there to hold her, to hold her knee. She is a super, super worthwhile figure. If you are a Musashi fan in any way, this is a great figure to have in your collection. And I don't feel like, I don't feel any regret about passing up on her deluxe edition. I feel like just Musashi alone is enough. And with that, that's the end of my haul. Thank you very much for joining me on this video. If you liked what you saw, please comment, like, and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. See ya.